at your heads. It's official. The world of automotive has pledged to switch to electric and it really feels like we're headed in the right direction. The electric revolution, as we here at HQ like to coin it, is snowballing right in front of our eyes with amazing developments in car tech like augmented reality heads up displays and self-driving cars. Oh, sorry, <laughs> one sec. Hello? Uh, yeah, hi, is that 2021? Yes. Yeah, uh, this is the 80s sci-fi movies calling, and we want our bodacious tech back, please. However, despite all of the advancement, there are still dinosaurs roaming the planet. Oh yes, people who are stuck behind the times, should we say, like a fax machine salesman at CES. And they love to eat you up for breakfast with a hot cup of intellect on how electric cars actually suck. It's just like, it's just like wrong. Well today, I'm going to run you through the top five EV myths that keep being posted on forums, on Twitter, and in our comment section, so you can help to correct these willfully ignorant misconceptions when you see them. And please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already to keep up to date with all of our latest videos because we have some great stuff coming your way. And if you like what we do, please do consider becoming a Patreon because not only does it help us make more videos like this, but also you get some cool extra content. All right, on to myth number one, or should I say dumbass argument number one. Um, actually, EV cars are worse for the planet than ICE cars. Well, we are starting with a biggie here because this is a go-to counter-argument from all the anti-EVers out there. There's a lot to address here, so let's peel back the layers and work through the process of how an electric car impacts the planet, starting with manufacturing. Currently, yes, manufacturing EVs does use more energy than manufacturing ICE cars. This is mostly due to the extra resources needed to make the batteries, in turn creating more pollution, as much as 59% more. Not great. However, this number can and will reduce over time as factories increase their reliance on renewable energy. Take VW, for example. They build their new ID3 in a factory powered entirely by clean energy. And most of us know that is not the whole story because once an ICE car hits the road, that scale starts to tip away from its favor. And this then brings us onto the next step of the argument. Naysayers argue that the electricity EVs run on is dirty anyway. Well, if you're looking at somewhere like Poland, where the electricity network is still mostly based on coal-fired power generation, then yes, naughty Poland. However, in the US, around 47% of all electricity comes from renewable sources. That number is 56% in Europe, and it is rising fast, much like the cost of running a petrol car in the year 2021. Am I right, guys? So right now, all the electricity we use to power our cars, our homes, our jacuzzis that us Brits in lockdown have bought in droves, it's half clean. The electricity, not the jacuzzis. Although. But to really gain clarity, let's flip perspective and take a look at the oil industry. Petrol starts life as oil, deep down in the ground. And to get said oil, it takes a lot of energy and causes huge environmental damage to wildlife just to extract. And that is just step one. For example, oil rig generators use around 20 to 30 metric tons of diesel per day. That is equivalent to 300,000 kilowatt hours per day. Then there's transporting the oil to refineries and getting it refined, which is also hugely intensive. Then sending it off to petrol stations. Every single step in the process is shockingly pollutive. And once that fuel is inside your tank, well, 70% of the energy generated from burning that petrol will be wasted by the combustion engine in your car as heat. Need I say more? In short, no. The electricity that powers EVs isn't perfectly clean, although it is rapidly getting cleaner as we continue to hit more milestones as renewable energy sources continue to grow. But compared to the process of turning oil into the petrol that goes into your car, it is substantially better. A recent study by Exeter and Cambridge Universities in the UK and a Netherlands uni I can't pronounce. Name me, concluded that electric cars are better for the climate than conventional petrol cars in 95% of the world. 95. 
and that is only going to get better. And to finish on the obvious, when it comes to their impact on our streets, EVs substantially improve air quality compared to their ICE equivalents and create zero nasty tailpipe emissions responsible for killing millions of people globally every year. In fact, one in five deaths, according to a study done by Harvard, the University of Birmingham, the University of Leicester and University of College London. Food for four. So let's just give those ICEs a cold shoulder. Get it? Right, dumbass argument number two. Um, actually, EV batteries only last five years and then they end up in landfills. Not true. Today, electric car batteries can last for 10 to 20 years before they need to be replaced. Once an EV battery loses its ability to power a car, it can be repurposed to power a home, an office, or contribute to a battery storage system. Once they're no good for that either, the reusable components will be recycled and the rest scrapped. Now, around 90% of the components that make up electric car batteries are recyclable. Not bad, right? Okay, dumbass argument number three. The main problem with electric cars is that you can't go on long journeys with them. Ah yes, that age old range anxiety. It's a fair worry to have. Yes, there was a time when your lecky ride could barely get you down to the end of your road. Back in like, the mid 1800s. However, electric cars have come a long, long way, even more so in the last 10 years. Now, there is a plethora of rangy EVs to cater to your long distance journeys and usually comes with way more tech as standard than the ICEs to keep your passengers entertained. But I digress. Pure electric vehicles have an average range of 197 miles, with models being able to go much further on a single charge. Take, for example, the Kia EV6, just recently released last month, that hits the heady range heights of 316 miles. The Jaguar I Pace and Pulsar 2 cover 292 miles. The Hyundai Kona Electric delivers 300 miles on a single charge. I really could go on, but you see what I mean. Range is understandably a huge factor when it comes to owning electric but let's not forget that the average car journey in the UK is around eight miles so in reality we really don't need much when it comes to the everyday unless of course you are doing some serious commuting I think we cleaned that one up all nice didn't we right dumbass argument number four yeah that's a really nice Ferrari and another thing about electric cars there's not even enough charging points Again, this is a huge put off for people. And actually, unless you own an EV, you most likely wouldn't have the experience to know whether or not this is actually the case. Why should you? But honestly, this couldn't be further from the truth. The UK charge network is substantial. There are now over 35,000 charge points across the UK. That's more than there are petrol stations. And 7,000 of those were installed just last year with many more in the works. The number of new charges is growing at an astonishing rate. Yes, there will be charge points defected by dodgy wiring as well as kids peeling off the QR codes. Real story. Where's your mother? But I can almost guarantee that there is another charge point a short drive away. And actually, most people do their charging at home because not only is it more convenient, but the residential chargers are lower kilowatts, meaning it's way better for the battery. The need for a public charge stop is a lot less common than you might expect. Right, what's the next one? Dumbass argument number five. Let's go. I heard you can't drive electric cars in the rain because you'll get electrocuted. No, 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 I'm not even gonna waste my time on that. Next one. And I bet you can't put an EV through a car wash. <laughs> no, right, I'm done. What the hell, people actually believe that? And actually, the thing that nobody's talking about is if everybody plugged in an electric car at the same time, the grid would crash. Okay, now this is something I can work with. There are people out there who quite regularly post comments onto our channel along the lines of Wake up sheeple, this is a conspiracy. If everyone plugged in an electric car at the same time, the grid would crash. Electric is a lie. Oh my god, maybe this person whose cat blocks key is broken has a point. We should see what the national grid has to say about this. They must be incredibly worried. There is definitely enough energy and the grid can easily cope. Graham Cooper, Transport Decarbonisation Director, National Grid. Oh, let's dig a bit more into what Graham has to say because in an article on the National Grid website, 
he's got some great myth-busting points to make. Unsurprisingly, the national grid directors don't live under a rock and have been preparing for the green transport changeover for quite some time. At least two years, in fact. Essentially, the grid will not crash because there is ample resource of clean energy to meet the demands. And that is just from the developing offshore wind farms alone. Also, a quick groundbreaking point from Graham here. And I quote, you don't need a 500 mile range battery car because nobody drives 500 miles non-stop. True. The limiting factor is actually biological. It's bladder range. Bladder range? Touche. Thinking about it, unless you've got your sweet old grandma in the back, realistically, you can probably hold out for the toilet for three hours at a push. And in that time, you'll probably travel about 200 miles before it's time for a service stop. And if anybody says that they can hold their bladder for longer, they're either lying or not hydrating. And that is a crime in itself. Look, it's fun to dunk on people's ignorance, but ignorance isn't bliss, it is dangerous. And when I'm old and gray, I want to live in a world where there's clean air that means that my asthmatic colleague Rich isn't constantly puffing on his inhaler. I can get why people are attached to petrol cars. If you offered me a Ferrari F40, I'm unlikely to say no to it, but we shouldn't let our love of iconic cars of the past blind us to what we'll all need to do as a society if we're going to save the planet. We need to switch to electric and we also need to switch to personal transport like bikes, scooters or legs for shorter journeys. So go out there and spread the word. When you see ignorant comments, please correct them. But before you do, I would love to hear from you lot down in the comment section about the heated EV debates that you've ended up in. What were the critics thrown at you? Any classic myths you've had to dispel? Let's talk about it. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider becoming a Patreon for extra and exclusive content, and I'll see you soon.